I'm here with Taylor Dent. We're sitting in media dining, and Taylor is here in several capacities during this U.S. Open. Why don't you tell us about some of your many jobs that you're doing this week? Uh, well, you know, job number one that I agreed to, you know, a long time ago was uh, doing some commentary for the USTA. They have a production that they put on and they sell to different countries and sometimes the tennis channel. Uh, CBS Sports Network, you know, they covered qualies, so that's fun for some of the players that don't get to make it on TV that much. I've, I've been doing qualies, did Labor Day with CBS Sports Network, and, uh, you know, for me, the most exciting job I have here is working with uh, Jared Donaldson. Um, and, and you're just kind of helping him through, helping him improve, and, and trying to help him achieve his dreams. I've been watching him over the last couple weeks. He played his main draw match against Monfils, and you called Monfils's match today. Um, it was impressive to see this young man out there against one of the top players in the world. What are you seeing in terms of his development? And you know, since you've been working, with, you've been with him a, about a year now, right? Yeah, you know, just trying to make sure we're on the same page as far as his goals. I mean, if, if goals are to be 100 in the world, well, then, you know, we, we have to focus on playing a certain way, and, and that'll give a bit of his goals are to win Grand Slams and to compete there, which I think, you know, why not? Why not aim for the stars? Then we have to, you know, set the bar pretty high with his training and with what we're trying to do with his game. And Jared's really the one that deserves all the credit for his improvement over the past year. I mean, all I have is advice. That's all I have. Jared supplies the hard work. He supplies the belief in me. He supplies the talent to be able to do what I'm asking him to do. And he, he supplies the persistence to, to kind of push through. All I'm really here for is, is advice and encouragement to tell him, you know, it is tough what you're trying to do. And there are going to be rough patches. There are going to be a lot of them. So you just got to keep your chin up, take the punches as they come. And in the long run, it'll pay off. I interviewed his mom yesterday, and we talked about his decision to turn pro rather than to go the college route. Were you involved in that decision at all? I try to be just tennis coach. Um, I stayed out of that decision because, you know, that's his personal decision. Um, if you ask me honestly and bluntly what is the best course to pursue if you want to be a Grand Slam champion, I think the numbers kind of speak for themselves. Not many modern Grand Slam champs go to college. So I think it's it's a tough, but you know, having said that, it's not an easy decision, and everybody's individual decision is their individual decision. Who knows what's right for them better than themselves? With the age going up and up and up on the men's side in terms of being able to accomplish these high-reaching goals, does that change your opinion of the value of college tennis at all? Um, I think what changes my opinion of the value of college, honestly, is is kind of. Uh, the economic climate, to be honest with you. Back when I had the option to turn pro or go to college, I almost couldn't afford to go to college because companies were willing to pay large sums of money just to roll the dice on young juniors. Now that's not there anymore. Um, it just it simply isn't, you know, not because the juniors are any worse. I think they're a whole lot better. It's just the companies don't have the same money to throw around that they, that they used to. Uh, so college, I think, today is way more of a viable option than it was when I was turning pro. And the fact that you, you said, you know, you're not losing that much because now guys are playing high, the best tennis, you know, in their 30s. So it, it definitely is not a bad option at all. Can you talk a little bit about your experience coming up through the juniors and your pro career and now transitioning into coaching and what you bring to the table as a coach that you learned through your experience coming up in tennis? I'm not sure what I bring to the table, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know what? Actually, this might sound sarcastic, but I think what uh, I bring to the table, for someone in Jared's shoes, because he wants to you know, be a big-time professional player, is honestly, uh, I got beat up by the best guys on the planet. And I know what they did to me that I didn't like and what worked so well. And I know what I tried to do and, and didn't work as well as I wanted it to work. So just, you know, there's a lot of little things that go into being a great tennis player. And I, I have a lot of experience doing things that worked, yes, but doing a lot of things that didn't work and, and seeing the best do what they do that works so well. So I'm just trying to hopefully shortcut Jared's learning curve and... Uh, 
and, and teach him how to be more like Federer and Djokovic and less like me. He's a big boy. He's tall. He's muscular. He's, you know, not a typical 17-year-old in his physical build. If he were not of that physical stature, do you think maybe he would go down a different pathway? I mean, do you think his physicality is a reason that he's finding success early and that it makes sense for him to keep pursuing the pro career? I guess that's interesting because, you know, I look at Jared and I say, what a little wimp. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you're a big boy, too. No, no, but it's true. But, you know, you can, and I don't mean it like that. I mean it in a loving way because he is still a baby. But you compare him to the pros out here, and, you know, he, he's six foot two and he weighs 155 pounds. I mean, there's not much meat on that boy. So he's playing against guys that are outweighing him by 20, 25, 30 pounds. And he's young. He will fill out. I hope that he will gain that weight. But he's got a good tennis player's body. You know, you don't need to look like a linebacker to play tennis. And in fact, I think it's counterproductive. Um, obviously, tennis is a physical sport. There's no getting around it. And I think 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", that's the ideal height. It seems like that's the ideal height. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and the reason, you know, that height is good is that the balls are spinning up, the courts are slower, so the strike zone is a little higher. Okay. It's really hot out here this week. As a coach, what do you do to prepare your player mentally and physically to deal with this? Because, I, I mean, we're seeing guys drop right and left. We saw it today in the juniors. Yeah, well, you see it in the pros, too, and the pros have been through this song and dance so many times before, so I think that's an answer in itself, is, is basically there's no real way you can prepare for this. You just make sure that there's no messing around, no goofing around, and that's more prevalent in the juniors than the pros. Make sure that the uh, hydration is, is on par. Make sure that the food, you know, the food intake is important. Make sure it's clean, not too much fat, not too much sugar. You don't want to be wasting those calories on things that are just going to make you tired in the long run. Um, but but most importantly, just just prepare them mentally. Say you know what, it's going to be a fight out there. I don't, I don't care if it's a one in one match. It's always a fight. That's true. That's true. You're a dad now. Will you be a tennis dad one day? Uh, I I don't know. You know, look, if my kids grow up loving tennis, I guess so. Um, I'm not going to tell them not to play tennis. I have you know my my two boys right now. I'm trying to steer them in in sports that might have a little bit more longevity than tennis. I, I got pretty banged up out on the tennis court and, and my career was cut a little shorter than I would like. Uh, but we'll see. We have a girl on the way and I think there's no better sport for, uh, for girls than tennis. I just think there's no ceiling. Uh, you can't outgrow tennis on, on the female side. Your dad was a great tennis player, great coach, and can you talk a little bit about what you learned from him now that you're coaching and the things that you learned from him as a tennis parent that you use as a coach? Uh, everything. Everything. I mean, I was around my dad forever. So it would be, honestly, it would be tough and it would be not fair for me to pin down and, and narrow it down. I mean, just from a raw coaching perspective, the technical aspect. My dad is, is a genius with technique, and I've had the, the good fortune and the blessings to be around him, listening to him, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't know anything about technique if it, if it wasn't for him. Um, as far as the mental aspect, emotional aspect, he was tough. He was a tough competitor, and, and you know, he raised me that way, so I, I was fortunate to, to be around that when I was a young boy growing up, and that's just how I go about thinking that's how I go about playing the game and he had a hard work ethic I mean you know I, I feel you know I'm biased because he's my dad and, and I love him but I just feel like everything that you want to do right and give yourself a good chance to be a great player he did and he impressed on me I wish you know as a stubborn son I would have taken in a little bit more but you know he did everything that he possibly could to make me a good player and I'm doing that hopefully for our kids that's great. What's the difference between coaching a 17-year-old just starting out on the Pro Tour versus coaching a more experienced adult, and I'm, I'm doing air quotes here, adult player? <laughs> uh, expectation management, I would, say, I would suppose. You know, um, my experience with experienced adults 
is uh, changing technique is rough. It's really rough. So I think the biggest gains can be made tactically and uh, understanding where the high percentage plays are and, and winning points that way. Now, you know, reworking a whole serve to, to get a few more cheap points on the serve. Again, I don't think that's a fair expectation to put on themselves uh, in regards to a 17-year-old boy. It's fair game. Whatever needs to be done, better be done and will be done. What are your expectations for Jared now that he's playing the juniors? He, he had his debut in the main draw. Um, like I said, he, he had a great match against Monfils, but you know didn't come through on the other side with the W. They did win a round in doubles, which was great, and got to play the Bryans, which, oh my gosh, what a cool experience that must have been. But now he's in the juniors, and the expectations on him are very different. I mean, the buzz is he's the one that's going to win. So how do you help him manage that, and, and what do you say to him? My expectations are very simple for Jared in, in the situation. Uh, one, we have a couple of things that he's focusing on in the matches, and I expect him to focus on those. And, and it's not result-oriented. He can still miss balls and do what I'm asking him to do 100% perfectly. So I expect that. And number two, I expect him to be ready for a fight, be ready for it to be ugly, because he is one of the hunted in the juniors draw, and everybody is going to be geared up and fired up and, and bringing their best tennis to play Jared. So... You know, I feel like for him to go out there and expect to win easy, it's it's a it's a fool's mindset. So I those are the only two things that I expect him to do. If he wins the tournament, I'll give him a pat on the back. If he does those things, if he loses next round and he does those things, I'll still give him a pat on the back. And you know what the thing is with a person in Jared's situation, it's all about improvement. The results will come if you keep working on improving and you keep focusing on the right things. That's all there is to it. I mean, you know. A win in the juniors would be fantastic, but our eyes are on big prizes, so this is just another step in that process. Jared's a bit feisty on the court. <laughs> I, I <laughs> Okay, yeah, he is, <laughs> but I love watching that. I, to me, it's exciting to see a kid with so much passion and so much fire in the belly that he has trouble containing himself sometimes. What do you say to him about that? Is that something you're trying to manage, or is it something you're trying to curtail altogether? Um, as a coach, what do you want for him in that regard? The biggest mistake I've ever seen with tennis players, and this happened to me myself because I was very feisty as well. Me and Jared, Jared does it a different way. He was feisty. He's feisty towards himself. I would engage the other opponent, and it's not good. It's not something I'm proud of. I regret it, but that's the way I was. Um, and I, I tried to just take it out of my game 100%, and I met terrible results because I'm just I end up being listless on the court. I end up being mopey and just sluggish and slow. So when you have an energetic person like myself, like Jared, it's not a matter of suppressing that. It's a matter of just directing it. It's 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 the equivalent of being uh, an explosion versus a rocket. We want to direct that energy in, in, in the right way, in a positive way. So that's what we're working on. But asking a 17-year-old boy to do that, it's not... It's not really realistic, and I'm tell I tell Jared all the time. The goal is is you know X, Y, and Z. Don't think that I expect you to do it right now. You know it's because that's maturity that men have, and I didn't have that until I was 21, 22 on the court. So it's unfair of me to ask you to do that when you're 17. Obviously, I wish it upon you. I pray it upon you, but realistically that takes time and, and emotional discipline to develop. It's just not something you snap your fingers and it happens. You're coaching Jared now. Is this a long-term relationship? Do you want it to be a long-term relationship, or is there an end in sight? How does that work? I mean, I just I have no idea how that goes. Well, you know, I don't know what to say. It's just the tennis business is what it is. I mean, how many times do you see coaches that last with players for three months, six months, nine months, a year? Uh, the relationship is tough. I'm not speaking between me and Jared. I think we have an unbelievable relationship right now. I enjoy hanging out with him, and he actually listens to me on the tennis court, so you can't get any better than that. Um, but, you know, the tennis coaching and, and player, it's a volatile business. I mean, it's the one business where Jared's the boss, yet he's 
paying me to tell him what to do. It, it's it's kind of an interesting combination. It is a lot like a marriage. You know, there has to be a certain way that I have to say things to Jared. There has to be a certain time that I have to say things to Jared. Sometimes I see something I don't like and it's better if I just keep my mouth shut. You know, it, so and I'm going to mess up. You know what I mean? And, and that's the way it is. I think that we are intending on it to be a long-term thing. But uh, if Jared seeks a better sees a better opportunity uh, in the future, then I know that that's, that's fine. That's just the business that, uh, that we're in. Can you talk a little bit about how his parents are involved with his tennis? I mean, they're here this week, obviously, watching and cheering for him. And his mom intimated that her, her role has changed now that he has turned professional and, you know, he's guiding things a bit more than he was prior. But her role has always been to be the mom. And her husband's role has been to be the tennis parent. And now he's a professional. Is there a role for a tennis parent in a professional player's life? Sure, absolutely. I mean, you know what Jared and every tennis player needs more than anything else is support. And nobody can support a player better than their parents. Just to tell them good job when they had a bad day. Just to tell them keep plugging away when they're in a slump. Uh, You'd be surprised. You know, when I was playing in the juniors... I used to look over to my dad after every point, and it wasn't to get coaching. It wasn't to be told how to beat this person. That I just wanted a thumbs up. I just want to know, hey, I'm doing okay out here. You know what I mean? Um, and I think you know, there's a definite huge role that parents play in that aspect. And, and Rebecca does an amazing job supporting Jared, and she's just willing to do and, and let Jared whatever he you know wants to pursue with his tennis career. And, and Courtney's been unbelievable. You know, I've actually learned a lot from Courtney, and he's just. He has an engineering background, so that's the way he looks at tennis. So I, I love our conversations, and you can't meet a dad that is, wants better for his son. He's just out there just trying to find the perfect situation for Jared, and Jared knows it. Jared knows how blessed and how fortunate he is to be uh, you know, the son of, of such great parents for sure. Thank you so much for talking with us. I know you're a busy guy. I'm going to let you get back to it, but best of luck. All right, you got it. Thank you.